Mahkemesi bu gördüğünüz tarihi salonda gerçekleşecek. Üç gün sürecek mahkemede sonuç pazartesi sabahı çıkılacak. <gülüyor> had a panel of advocates uh, and we called them advocates because you know it has the two sense one is the lawyerly sense and the other sense the advocate for a cause the advocates for peace we must very clearly understand that if you're talking about the primary objective of weakening the american state then the people who are already doing a damn good job of it are the iraqis themselves and if that is the case, then we must understand that a specific part of the leadership of this movement, of the global anti-war movement, belongs to the Iraqis. These people consisted of experts and witnesses. And witnesses from, let's say, uh, Iraq, people who live in Iraq, or people who have been to Iraq, like Dar Jamal, etc. At Fallujah General Hospital, Dr. Ahmed, who asked that only his first name be used because he feared U.S. military reprisals, said of the April 2004 siege that, quote, the Americans shot out the lights in the front of our hospital, they prevented doctors from reaching the emergency unit at the hospital, and we quickly began to run out of supplies and much needed medications. He also said that Marines kept the physicians in the residence building several times, intentionally prohibiting them from entering the hospital in order to treat patients. When a hospital or a government office is bombed, people are left under the rubble for days, injured, and then die because no one will save them, no one can save them. So we have another problem now. They used uh, named DU weapons in 1991, and now we have a bunch of new generated weapons that has either uranium or depleted uranium. Uh, they, they say it's a dense, heavy metal. They wouldn't name it. They say this, this cruise missile contain dense, heavy metals. But we think and proved in Iraq that this dense, heavy metal in cruise missiles is really uranium. You see, because one of the things that's happening to the world, unfortunately, is that we live in the era of experts, you know? So someone who knows about torture doesn't know about corporatization, or someone who knows about corporatization doesn't know about ecological effects. And so that's the great thing about what has been done. Even in the planning of the program, you can see political minds at work looking at every facet of what an invasion today means. I think it makes a difference whether we treat the occupation of Iraq as separate from the Iraq war. There is, from the perspective of international law, an advantage of treating it separately, because that automatically engages international humanitarian law and the Fourth Geneva Convention, which means that it imposes on the occupying forces uh, unconditional obligations to protect the civilian population. Resolution 533 recognized occupation forces as the official representative of Iraq, but this is totally against international law. How can occupation forces represent the people of the country that they have occupied? There is, of course, the betrayal of the Iraqi people. But there is also the betrayal of this book, the betrayal of the United Nations Charter, the betrayal of our conscience, of our collective conscience. The Security Council and particularly the Secretary General, responsible for the welfare of staff, appear to have failed to understood that the UN was, even before collaboration, the most hated organization in Iraq. Why? Well, why not? After 12 years of deadly United Nations sanctions that cost Iraq over one million lives, mostly children, followed by conspicuous collaboration with a common Iraqi enemy, that is, the American and British occupying forces, 
and after 12 years of humiliation and loss of dignity under UNSCOM's intrusive search for weapons of mass destruction. Why are we surprised? The plan calls for nothing less than Iraq's comprehensive transformation from a centralized command economy with very strong state intervention into a market economy in which the state plays virtually no other role but to create, maintain, and defend the openness of the market. This is not about reconstruction as we know it. As Donald Rumsfeld himself said, we're not interested in reconstructing Iraq. This is not about reconstructing Iraq. This administration has the direct representatives of corporate interests in the United States history. Not for a moment am I saying that it is this administration alone. What I am saying is that these corporate corporations control both the Republican and Democratic Party. However, the catapulation into power of this directly representatives of the, this group in the 2000 election has to a, to a large extent aggravated and intensified the contradiction in the situation. You have President Bush, uh, the Vice President Dick Cheney, Condoleezza Rice, and the former Commerce Secretary Tom Evans, all of whom represent the Texas oil lobby of the United States of America. When you humiliate a detainee in their culture, denigrate them in their religion, trample on the Quran, isn't that racism? And I would suggest, perhaps, that the jury may like to consider whether international conventions against racism have also been broken. We also had a jury of conscience. Instead of saying the jury, we said a jury of conscience because we wanted to have a group of people that were somewhat representative of the conscience of the world. Directed to Liz Fickett about um, Islamophobia and uh, racism. You have not used the term Islamophobia in your presentation. And I'm just wondering whether there is a reason for this, because this is something which the jury would want to consider, whether we should use the term Islamophobia in relation to what you have chosen to describe as racism, because I think there is a conceptual difference between the two terms. I understand as Islamophobia as a hostile mindset towards Islam. And there is obviously massive Islamophobia in Europe. But what I have tried to describe is the structural racism, which is both anti-Muslim racism and anti-foreigner racism. But I wouldn't want to prejudge for the jury um, how they want to describe that. I just say make the distinction between prejudice and, and structured racism. If the WTI uh, were to suggest that the UN institute an inquiry into its own failures on Iraq. Can you phrase for us or suggest for us how and to whom in particular that recommendation should be made? We are uh, very regularly informed about the military resistance, but we have very little information about civil resistance or do, are there political groups who have managed to have dialogue amongst them? What's their agenda? Do they represent the Iraqi population or at least what part of the population do you have information on the Iraqi civil resistance? With regard to changing pressures and roles of women and how this is playing out in the Iraqi resistance in various aspects. Quiero saber si están agrupadas para la lucha exigiendo verdad y justicia y a dónde nos podemos dirigir para comunicarnos con ustedes.